In the video on images, I showed you how to read an image file, like a JPEG file, off the disk and show it in your sketch. Now we're going to dig a little bit deeper and look at the individual pixels in any image. Here's a picture I took of a couple of pieces of wood. It probably looks just fine to your eye. It might look a little smeary or distorted because of the compression in making this video, but you know what digital images look like and generally they're very nice. Now let's try zooming in. As I zoom in more and more, we can start to resolve the individual pixels or little image elements that make up the picture. I'll scroll over to a region where we can really see these things clearly. Now you can see the individual pixels that make up the picture. I can zoom in on this even more and you can really see each one of these is a hard little square. Now pixels don't have to be square, in fact they're often rectangular, but this is generally the idea. The picture is made up of lots of little spots, each one having a uniform color. Not only is this how a JPEG or other picture is displayed, it's how your monitor is working and how you're looking at these images right now. If I zoom out, we can start to see more and more of these little pixels, and at a certain point, they begin to blend together and the image begins to look nice and continuous. If you've done much photo editing, you know it's often nice to be able to get at the individual pixels and be able to change the color of each pixel in the image. Of course, we can do that in processing. Here's how. Suppose we start with this image. I'm going to zoom in on this little section near the backpack so we can see the individual pixels, and here they are. Now suppose we want to modify just one pixel. I'm going to pick one on the backpack, sort of near the bottom. Just the one red pixel I'm highlighting here. How do I tell processing that's the pixel I want to change? Well, it's really easy. I just give processing the X and Y coordinates of that pixel, and those uniquely define that individual pixel. As always in processing, 0, 0 is in the upper left corner. X goes to the right and Y goes down. Now that I've identified a particular pixel, I can ask processing to give me back the color that's located there. I do that by calling get. Get takes two arguments, X and Y, both are integers, and what we get back is the color at that pixel. A nice feature of get is that if you ask for a pixel that's off screen, say X and Y are both negative, it won't crash. Instead, it'll just give you back black. Suppose we want to change the color of this pixel. Well, let's create a color. Here I'll call it C2, and I'll make it bright green. To set the pixel at XY to this color, we call set. It takes three arguments, the X and Y values of the pixel and the color we want to put there. Take a look at the pixel. As soon as we call set, this pixel gets overridden, and now this is our new image. So that little red spot on the screen has now become green. Now when we step back, we might not see that one green dot, but if we change enough pixels, we'll see a difference in the image. So really, this is all there is to it. If you want to know the color of a pixel on the screen, call get with X and Y. If you want to set the color of a pixel on the screen, call set with X, Y, and the color you want to put there. Let me show you a couple of examples of things you can do with these two function calls. Here's a fun little program to make the image look like it's dripping paint. Setup does nothing more than what we've seen before. Creates a graphics window, loads an image, and puts the window up on the screen. When we get to draw, we start a loop. The loop runs a hundred times each time we go into draw, because I want this to happen fast. What's interesting is what's inside the loop. First, I pick a random point somewhere on the screen. I get an X between zero and width and a Y between zero and height. Now I retrieve the color at that X, Y. Now I pick a random number, here a number from five to 20, to tell me how long I should make the drip that drips down from the X, Y I just picked. Now I enter another loop, and this loop goes around once for each value of drip len. So the value of D goes from zero to drip len minus one. Inside the loop, all I do is I set the pixel at X and Y plus D, so that pixel is D pixels down from the random place I started, and I set that to the color of the starting pixel. So I'm basically taking the color of a pixel and copying it to the pixel beneath it, and then beneath it, and beneath that, and beneath that, working my way down drip len times. 
Let's run this. Here's the program running on my New Zealand backpacking picture. And you can see it's just doing exactly what we described. I pick a random pixel and then I just smear it downward vertically. So there's really nothing to this program, but I really like the way it looks. It looks to me like the picture has been left out in the rain and things are beginning to smear downwards. The basic idea here is the same as before. Every time through the loop, I pick a random X and Y. In this program though, I then pick one of the four directions, to the right, to the left, above and below, and I simply swap the two pixels. So I have a starting pixel and a neighbor. I get the colors of both, and then I set them using each other's color. The result is that the colors appear to migrate. They seem to move around a little bit from one frame to the next. The picture gets a little fuzzier, but it has this nice grainy quality to it. The longer this program runs, the more blurry the picture will become. I really like it when it gets into this kind of frosted glass mode, where things look fuzzy, they're diffused, I can kind of recognize them still. It's a really nice effect. And there's nothing more to it than just randomly swapping neighboring pixels. By the way, I wanted you to see how this looked over a long period of time, so the video that we're watching now has been sped up by a factor of about 30. So to recap, to find the color of a pixel at XY we call get, and to set the color of a pixel at XY we call set. The advantages of get and set is that they are easy to use. You can call get and set for any XY. As I said before, if you try to get a color that's off the screen, you'll get black. And if you try to set a color that's off the screen, well, nothing happens because you're setting a color that doesn't show. So that's great. In neither case does anything bad happen. You can just call get and set freely. There is a downside to these two function calls though, and that's that they can be kind of slow. That's partly due to the fact that they're checking the X and Y every time you try to get or set to determine if the pixel is on the screen or not. Now I have the arrow for slow going all the way down. It's not that bad, so I'm gonna rotate it a little bit. These things are slow, and we're going to see a way to go faster. But they're rock solid and reliable. And when you're first writing a new program, these are often a great way to get and set the colors, even if they're a little bit slow, because your program will always run. So this is really all you need to know to read or write the color of any pixel on the screen.